PC Unguolo, brother, how are you today? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. <laughs> man, just for the people, man, can you introduce yourself and, and maybe tell us a little bit about how you came to know Jesus Christ? Uh, my name is BC Ngualo. Um I came to faith about 13, about 13 years ago. Um, I just moved down to Austin. And, um, and I, come, I come from a background in which I've been in church most of my life through various, um, various <laughs> denominations. I think uh, we were Pentecostal at one time. <laughs> we were Baptist at the another time. We were Catholic. We were Catholic at one time, mm -hmm. and we were non-denominational at one time. And so it, all that teaching over the course of uh, 17 years came to came to head when I moved down to Austin. Uh, I realized that the the life I was living um, was foolish. I realized it was it was for nothing. I think I. I've always had a questioning spirit, and I always questioned the way I was living. I always questioned everything, questioned everything, and uh, so from then, I, I from then on, I, I decided that you know, I keep questioning these things of this world, but the one thing I, I don't question is uh, is Jesus. And so um, I gave my life uh, to Christ um, that fall, and uh, I got baptized that no, right before my birthday in November. And so um, it was a uh, and I think it was spurred on uh, partly uh, because of, you know, what I think one time you, you gave me a Bible like three years, ago, three years before that, two years prior to that. It was an NLT version. I still mm -hmm. got it. And uh, New Goon, baby. New Goon. And uh, it spurred, it, that, that spurred it on just, you know, just uh, I guess you, you, uh, you share the gospel and why you believe two years before that. And so it just kind of helped that process along where. Um, that seed had been planted and it was growing, and uh, even though my my flesh and my flesh and uh, and sin was trying to kill that, <laughs> was, trying to, was trying to keep that thing buried and weeded and uh, unweeded, man. Uh, I think that just man, the Holy Spirit just moved and uh, continued to um, just grow, continue to grow that yeah. seed in me. Yeah. So, man, um, <clears throat> what um, you lead what um, some people call a missional community. Can you break that down? What is a missional community? And what does that look like in the 13th Disciple Missional Community? Like, put some flesh on that for folk. So a missional community is a group of 20 to 50 people who are on mission uh, for Jesus in their community. Uh, our particular community is well, our, our plant, where, we, where we're at right now is Missouri City, where our house is. And then, but it's all the Southwest, you mm -hmm. know, um, A-Leaf, Sugar Land, Missouri City, um, even extends to Richmond for, for a little bit, for some, a little bit. And so... Um, and this is Texas. It's right? Texas. Yeah. <laughs> this okay. is Texas. Okay. And so, um, man, 13 Disciple um, has been through a lot of transition over the last three, well, it has been a lot of, through a lot of transition the last three years. Um, we've had to move from place to place a couple of times, but um, most importantly, the work we have done out there is, man, just really um, share share Jesus with individuals within our uh, within our region or within our geographical context, and um, we even um, extend ourselves to um, a local high school which we adopted, which is Willow Ridge High School, and uh, we adopted that school and. Uh, over the last year or so, we've been just trying to pour into that community. Um, 13 Disciple is very, very uh, dynamic in the sense that, man, it's a lot of re really random people. When I say random, it's, to God they're not random, but when you see there's just the dynamics of, we have everybody from accountants to doctors to teachers, um, we have lawyers within our community, and they love Jesus. and. Uh, just here at his 13th Disciple, between my wife and I, we just try to love on everybody within our community, including uh, children. <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. we have we have kids um, of our of our own, and so the kids will come upstairs and they play. Mm -hmm. And so we have um, uh, we have times we've had a, kind of a children's gathering upstairs mm -hmm. where we have yeah. uh, kids come through. So is there a difference between? Because I hear this all the time. Is there a difference between a you know, quote unquote, small group or Bible study, and what you guys are calling missional community. There's, there's a big difference. Um, it's a family. It's a family on mission. I, I think small group Bible study, 
I'm not saying they can never be families, but I, I think up front, we're a family. I, you know, before, first and foremost, we're a family on Christ, we're a family um, on mission for Jesus Christ in the Southwest. And so, man, we're, we're a family and there's ups and downs in family, but overall, it's very organic. And I believe, you know, I've been in the Bible study context, I've been in the small group context, and I'm not saying anything wrong or right with those, I'm not. But I feel like the, the authenticity that is, that is uh, that, you know, when we gather, I think the, the authenticity and the, the genuity, um, or the genuineness, excuse me, the, is there in the mission community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, you know, we have real people with real, real issues and, and real, uh, sin, uh, real sins that they're, mm -hmm. they're fighting. Mm -hmm. um, there have been, they've been prayer meetings, prayer walks. There have been, um, where, we, where we talked, there's been some rebuke. Mm -hmm. There has been um, people challenged to grow as leaders, yeah. you know, and so it's a family. And I believe that in a Bible study context, it's usually uh, maybe one or two or three individuals who lead in that context. Yeah. Uh, or a small group is usually one person or maybe a husband and wife team who lead. No, it's, uh, it's, it's very plural within our group. But, you know, we all are on uh, one, uh, one accord in terms of we're a family. Yeah. Well, you're going to be sharing at Hope for the Trade, May the 27th through the 29th, 2016. Uh, and you're going to be sharing some of your insights. Uh, why Hope for the Trade for you? Uh, hope for the Trade for me, I think ultimately, man, I, I want to communicate, uh, as well as my, with my wife, we want to communicate just how to do, uh, well, how we've done, how about that, I, Everybody's different, but how we've done um, ministry, uh, just being married uh, for the last seven years, having two kids, um, and what that looks like within the, uh, within the, the context, of obviously the missional community context, as well as just living your lives together, like First Thessalonians 2, that's living your, giving, pe giving people your lives, as well as your, your wife your life, as well as your kids your life, but giving others your life, including your local church. And so um, what that looks like, and it's been, it's been some struggle, you know, been a lot of gas, a lot of driving, um, a lot of prayer, um, some things we have to, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage um, singles or people who are married that they can, uh, A, <laughs> love Jesus, mm -hmm. and love Jesus, and B, they can possibly lead a missional community. Yeah. And, and, um, and again, we're not perfect, but what we're trying to do is, man, it, it, it's crazy. If you really think about it, man, if you worship Jesus and you love Jesus, it compels you to mission. Yeah. And when it compels you to mission, uh, you're and, and you're married and you have your family, and but you but your family loves Jesus. It's kind of hard not to do mission. It really truly is, you know. That uh, I, I was listening to somebody and they're talking about um, as you worship Christ and as you. Uh, become enthralled with his uh, his being and his beauty and, and God and his being all of it being all of God it, it leads you to it leads you to want to communicate this to other people within yeah. your community and and my wife and I we talk about Jesus we talk about God in our intimate time and in our intimacy and it just com it it just compels both of us to just love people uh, to the point where they want to know Jesus and and it, it it compels it compels us well. The love of Christ compels us to uh, want to share this with everybody that we know. Say, hey, you can do it. We can. We'll, we're going to encourage you. We're going to be there with you. There's going to be times where you're like, you know, you're sleepy. There's going to be times where you're crying. There's going to be times where, you know, your kids, you know, you have to discipline your kids, <laughs> you know. Um, and so uh, we've we've uh, just we've done it, and, and we just want to share that with people. I mean, there's been times where we've had we got my your oldest son in the cart. And we went around Houston, and we were giving out food to homeless people. And my son was talking, just talking to homeless. He was one or two. He was talking to homeless people. We were all just chopping up. We were praying together, and and my wife was pregnant with the other son, and she was walking around Houston, you know. And it, it, it just, I believe those times, I believe those times are a part of what has kept us together. I think through the missional community aspect, I think it's helped us uh, mold our marriage, helped us work on our marriage, and it's also helped us to stay married uh, and then helped us to raise our kids as well. Yeah. Man, it's good stuff, man. I, I can't wait, uh, not just because you're my brother, but uh, I learned so much from you, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say 
had hope for the trade. May the 27th through the 29th. AKA Jesus Appreciation Weekend, <laughs> 2016. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. Okay, man. Yeah.